Okay, so this morning before I take Bam Bam to the vet for his um, yearly inoculations, um, I wanted to take care of getting at least this much done. I think we have time. We might even have time to put the zipper on the tabs that we created yesterday or the day before yesterday. So we're going to go to the machine and um, just stitch up these little tabs. And, and I think you guys know I'm just kind of winging this. This is not part of that pattern, um, but it's what I wanted to do. So that's why I'm, I'm doing this. There you go. Alrighty, so I have um, the little tabs of fabric that we created for the um, back, the end of the zipper. And I'm going to go ahead and just leave that little piece of silver showing. I don't think that's traditional, um, but I'm going to use the full length of the zipper. So that's why I'm just going to let that be there. And then the same here on this. I want the zipper to close up as far as it can. So, all right, I'm using gray thread in both my needle and in the bobbin. And I'm going to go very slow. In fact, I'm gonna put my machine on half speed. I don't wanna stitch over these pins. And I have actually used some tape, um, some, uh, not real sure what it's called. I've just had it in my sewing kit for a long time. It's like a double-sided tape. Okay, I'm gonna go across without hitting the metal teeth here on the zipper. I might even have to slide my needle over. No, I can do it. There we go. I'm just going really slow. And then I wanna kinda of make sure this is straight. And sometimes you just kinda of have to take a stiletto or a pin or something to shift your fabric into that perfect position. Okay, I'm gonna go across it one more time. And again, I need to use a pin to kind of shift my fabric the way I want it to be. Might not be perfect, but. There we go. And I'm going to go across the top two for just a little continuity. And I'm going to go around one more time inside the stitch lines that I just made. I really want the zipper to be um, encased and tightly stitched in our little tab. Oh, goodness. Okay. Uh, my scissors. I started looking for a um, collection of fabrics uh, for my older daughter. I want to make her one of these bags as well. And um, she is a, uh, she's an animal lover. They have pugs. She and her husband have pugs and kitties. And um, she also likes uh, peacocks and the peacock colors. I uh, painted her a peacock a few years ago for Christmas. Um, so I'm kind of, I don't know, I'm struggling on the, the fabric that I want to use for her bag. Um, there's a lot of really cute um, puppy and kitty fabrics on the market. 
that you can get just about anywhere. Um, Amazon has them. Um, some of the bigger stores like Michael's and Hobby Lobby and Joanne have them as well. So, I don't know. I was kind of... I, I was not able to find a actual Peacock collection, like a fat quarter or half yard bundle anywhere. Um, so I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. I could just go buy a half a yard of this and a half a yard of that and make my own bundle. Um, I might do that because I have a lot of 50% off coupons at Joanne. Um, We'll see. Okay, so testing it, it's very strong. We have a tab on the end over here and a tab on the front part of the zipper right here. And that will allow me to, um, in this particular case anyway, lay the zipper on top. And then these two tabs will just be there for um, looks and a little stability as well. So, I'm going to, I think, try to do this at the machine, or excuse me, at the ironing board. Um, it is so much easier when you have a zipper like this to tape it, up because it's going to be on the outside of the, in other words, we're not hiding the tape. The tape is part of the design. So, what I need to do is make sure that the zipper portion is outside of this right here. It, the zipper part, the, the teeth, needs to be riding along the edge of our fabric here. And the, the easiest way to keep that in place is to use some type of tape. So I'm going to try this. Um, I, I'm not able to find my preferred tape. I think it got used at the wedding. Um, and while I have found almost all the boxes, uh, there are a few still missing. But I can just kind of do a rough um, measurement here and um, I'm going to lay this down along that edge of the tape, the, the zipper tape. And I'm going to go ahead and do that on both sides because I know once I get everything lined up, it's not going to hold it. It's I mean, it's not bad at holding, but it's not super strong. And I don't want to have to keep taping and retaping and, oh, I didn't get that where I wanted it. Okay. So just along that edge. And then if you'll just run your thumbnail down the paper side it makes it easy to remove the paper, especially on something like a, a lace zipper. Once you get one little corner going. See, I don't know if you can see that. It's leaving behind the other side of the tape. And then again, there's the other side of that tape. Okay, so I'm going to put this in place. I need to make sure I'm lined up like I should be. And then just kind of press it with your fingers into place. down just a bit so I think I'll use another little piece of tape. I didn't get it quite long enough. There we go. 
And you can put the tape on top of itself. It, it won't hurt anything. It's not going to gum up your sewing machine. force this into the spot where I want it. Okay. Now I'm going to unzip the zipper just a teeny bit. I think I will put some pins just to make sure I'm staying where I need to be because I can see it from this side. I can see where the tape or the zipper teeth are. I certainly don't want to stitch on top of those teeth. Okay. But I do want it to stay in place. And then I'll just have to manipulate the zipper as I go, either opening or closing just moving the the zipper pull out of range of my sewing machine needle. Okay, we're gonna go stitch this part down and then we'll do the other side. Now because I can move my my needle on my sewing machine, I don't need to worry too much about using a zipper foot. You can use a zipper foot if you so desire. Um, on a zipper like this one, where it's a an outside installation, so to speak, it, it's not that, it's just not that big a deal. If you can move, well that was dumb putting that tape there. I didn't realize it was gonna be in my way. Um, but it, see, I can move my needle over to get as close to the edge where the teeth are as possible. And again, I'm just going to go super slow. And I don't want to hit any pins, so I'm going to remove those. And watch out for the pull. And like I said, I'm just going to move it out of the way as I need to. Making sure everything is straight. needed. Move this out of the way. And you can actually, when you need to, you can just zip it back so that now it's back here and it won't be in the way. But just make sure you don't slip off of your, where you need to be stitching like I just did. It's a lot of fiddling and manipulating. How kind of zigzag? I don't think it'll show. If I want to, I can remove it and straighten it out. And then remember, this down here, the very end of the zipper is also metal, so don't hit that with your needle. looks like. I could tell that my thread was getting snarled up on itself, which happens. Just remember all these things can be, you know, dealt with. Okay. So if I unzip it, okay, that's fine. That looks perfect. I'm not worried about that at all. So now we're going to go get the other half and do the same thing on the other side. <clears throat> uh, 
this way. Yeah. It's just not intuitive to me when I look at this little lining piece. <laughs> Sometimes when you are a person who can do just about anything with both hands, you know, with the, the forced right-handed, it doesn't make a true um, ambidextrous person, but it does create some um, hand dominance issues. And being predominantly right-handed, but also having this latent desire to use your left hand can create um, just a plethora of issues. I was watching a um, sort of a science documentary about it, and it explains so many of the issues that I faced growing up. Um, an inability to comprehend math, because um, what makes sense to one half of your brain doesn't make sense to the other half, and they're constantly battling and fighting, and the whole world just doesn't seem to understand that as hard as you might be trying, you are dealing with concepts that your your mind isn't capable of accepting as a true fact. I was blown away by that realization. And it described my um, struggles with algebra in high school almost as though they were reading from my life story. <clears throat> Being able to get the answer to the problem, but not being able to do the problem in the proper algebraic way uh, was always a concern. <laughs> I remember my father staying up till 3 a.m., frustrated beyond words. Why, just why can't I understand? Well, because you decided that I was not going to be left-handed, remember? far-reaching consequences for silly decisions. Okay, now I need to move my needle over again, closer to this direction, the left, to get close to the teeth on this side. My zipper pull is down here, and as I approach that, I will be moving it out of the way. And I realize I was stitching on the back side before, but for me, again, this is an ambidextrous issue, and I don't fight it. This is the way I must do it for it to make sense. Okay, my pins are going to have to come out this direction. I feel like I'm circling the earth in the opposite direction. Okay, so we're going to go this way. And I can see through this lace, this uh, lace zipper. So I know that I'm still underneath, but if I need to check, I'm just going to have to take it out. Okay, I'm coming up to a pin. I'm going to go ahead and remove it. Okay. My foot is kind of riding along the edge of the zipper teeth as sort of a makeshift guide. Hmm. Things are moving weirdly here. So I will probably end up having to restitch some of this. That's okay. I'm still happy with our um, basic look here. I am going to unzip the zipper. I might raise the zipper foot so I can get past. There we go. Okay, just keep everything together. I need to remember that there's a metal stopper here. I don't want to hit that with the needle. Okay. And now let's see what this looks like. 
I chose gray thread because I wanted to kind of match some of the grays that are evident in the design that we chose the fabrics that we picked out here okay Now, is this correct? Oh, I think I might have stitched my zipper on upside down. <laughs> that would be so like me, wouldn't it? No, wait a minute. Again, this is like not... No, I did not. Correct. This is what's supposed to look like because when you unzip it, you open it up. And there's the inside. Okay. Oh. Okay. Whew. Now, next step. So we've got that done. Now we need to make a side piece, which I think I did right here. And this will go like we did before, around right sides together. And we need to match up the top edge of the side piece to the top edge of our um, lining. And we'll be keeping the zipper, zipper pull, the whole zipper contraption out of the way as we're pinning or clipping if you choose to use those clips. And remember, you need to trim or clip the, um, the circle here as you're going around this corner. It's, uh, it's round and the fabric isn't really going to want to um, lay flat. So without clipping into your seam allowance, just along the, the edge, as small of a snip as you can make, and do both the side piece and the piece of lining. Just clip like this, and that will help this little section right here just match right up and lay nice and flat make sure you use plenty of pins I think we used three or four in the main bag the outer part okay there's another little and then remember I also double stitch right here for added strength and stability and you can do that if you want to it's not part of the pattern instructions Okay, now we're coming around the long side of the bottom edge. And we've got to clip again. So I'm going to clip onto the lining, through the lining and the fleece interfacing, and then basically the same thing on the side. And I'm making about an eighth of an inch clips into the fabric and that will truly help it go around that outer corner like that. Just add as many pins as you want to and then we're going back up the other side and remember I had to make this piece of fabric so to speak I had to create it out of a scrap that I had so it's it's not going to perfectly 
match. I'll have a little bit more than I need. I'll just cut that off. Um, I'm going to make sure I don't catch my zipper in. I'm just going to fold it out of the way and then come up here to the very top of the lining and pin it like this. And then I have this extra piece of fabric here I don't need. And I can trim that off, but I want to make sure I trim it where I need to trim it. Um, not, not too short. <clears throat> so, rather than trimming off all, I'm just going to kind of, just to make it easier to manipulate, just give myself a little wiggle room there. Okay. All right. And then we'll we'll do the same thing on this. We're going to sew one at a time. And then we'll be able to turn it inside out because we have a zipper here that we can flip. And remember, this is the inside right here. So this is what we'll be seeing when we open up the bag. And our little zipper tabs are perfect. All right, so I'm going to leave it here. I have um, my personal trainer doing physical therapy today at 2.30, but when I return, I will probably try to finish the bag. Tomorrow is Easter. I know it'll be a long time past Easter when you see this, but <clears throat> I want to get it done. So what is left to be done is pin, stitch, what we were just working on, and then I'm going to take this white bee fabric and create our binding. And that is a, a piece of fabric that you create by cutting 45 degree bias strips and then stitching together in a very um, uh, special way. And I'll describe how to do that. Um, and that'll be the final thing. Once we get that stitched on, the bag is done. And I will start working on the bag I want to make for my older daughter. I can't wait to get that fabric. But I think we are just about done. And this is going to be very cute. I like the fabric. I like the way the bag turned out. Um, I'm thinking for my older daughter... Um, she might like the medium-sized bag, but she might also like a larger bag. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to have to give that some thought. They do have, as you know, on the pattern front, we have looked at it many times, they have the larger version and the smaller version. But I'm almost thinking especially with a peacock style fabric, the larger bag might be kind of pretty. So I'll look at those requirements. Oh, it's in my room. I'll look at those requirements and we'll decide about um, whether we're gonna do a large bag, a medium bag, or a small bag for the Oregon daughter. Anyway, like and subscribe if you wish. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comments below down there. Um, I will link my Facebook also in the description, um, Laurie's Heirloom Sewing Page Facebook. Um, that will also be linked, and that's where I, I share these videos. And feel free to ask questions there as well. So have a wonderful Saturday. I'm thinking we might get some sunshine here in the Pacific Northwest. I hope it is sunshiny where you live.